Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us via our online campus here at Annistown Road Church. We want you to know that we do not take it lightly that you chose to worship with us this morning. I'd like to inform some and remind others that you can give online via the link below. And please remember to follow us on Facebook and Instagram where you will receive encouraging words as well as stay updated on Annistown News. Now, I'd like for everyone to just prepare your hearts and your minds for worship through music and the word. It is our prayer that today's word would find fertile ground within your hearts and bloom everlasting. Thank you and enjoy the sermon. I want to welcome everyone to worship this morning. We're going to sing this song and sing about how our God is unstoppable. Nothing is impossible through him. We remember that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He has the name above all names. We believe that, so we're going to sing it out like we believe it's true. Sing, heaven thundered and the world was born. Heaven thundered and the world was born. Life began. Unstoppable God. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. And freedom conquered, all our chains undone. has overcome and faith commanded when the stone was gone darkness was denied when the stone was gone yeah sing unstoppable unstoppable God let your glory go things in your name they shall be done unstoppable unstoppable God may your glory go on and on impossible things in your name they shall be done nothing will be impossible with him believe that? Sing this with me. Nothing will be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus our God unstoppable. Again, nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Sing it out. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable.
Jesus, we are thankful for the cross. We are thankful that you endured a sinner's death for us, even though you are perfect. God, we love you for the gift of salvation. We love you for the blood that you shed just for us. We praise you and we love you for this. Sing, there is a place. There's a place where streams of grace of leap and wide. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. For all the love, where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. Sing at the cross. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you, where your love ran red, and my sin washed white. I owe all to you, I owe all to you, Jesus. There is a place. A place where sin and shame are powerless. You believe that? Then my heart has peace with God and forgiveness. cross at the cross I surrender my life I mean no of you I mean no of you when your love ran red and my sin washed white I owe all to you I owe all to you sings a 
of his love for me. And he took my sin and my sorrow and made them his very suffered and died alone. Now we sing. They're singing how marvelous, how wonderful and my song shall part we're going to sing is going to be our joy. So we sing it like we believe it. And with the ransom and glory his face I at last shall see and it will be my joy through the ages to sing is love for me. We sing surrender my life I'm in awe of you I'm in awe of you where your love ran red and my sin washed white I owe all to you I owe all to you I owe all to you I owe all to you, Jesus. We owe it all to you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood. We sing how marvelous, how wonderful in my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. God, we thank you for how you love us. God, we thank you that we have something to be joyful about no matter what time we, that we're in. We thank you that your son Jesus provides an opportunity for us to come to know him. that we may have salvation and spend eternity with you in heaven. We can receive the Holy Spirit and the power of you, your unstoppable name. God, in that we can accomplish anything. We can suffer through anything. We can make it through any circumstance. The entire church can come together and worship because we know 
that your son Jesus, nothing can stand before him. And we love you for that. And so, God, we pray that through your Holy Spirit, you open us up, you open our hearts, minds, and ears for your message today. And we receive all that you have for us. And we pray this in your holy and righteous name. Amen. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us here on our online campus at Annistown Road Church. We greatly, greatly, greatly give God thanks for you being here today. Also, I want to take the time to thank each of you who came out yesterday to help with the uh, project that we had on campus during service day. It was such a exciting time and it was just a blessing to see so many people faces and I appreciate uh, everyone for uh, respecting social distancing while we carried out these projects. And I look forward to everyone coming back again uh, next weekend on June the 6th where we have another service day. And I just wanna give God the thanks and uh, just really um, just so proud of uh, the church turning out in such numbers to help with this major, major event that's gonna benefit our church as well as our community. So thank you so much. Also, last week we concluded uh, the series that we had been in for three weeks called Reset. And Reset was about taking the way we think and do life and replacing it with a kingdom-minded focus. And I give God thanks for each of you who not only took notes, who also read your Bible, but I heard back from uh, several people about different things that they saw was applicable to their lives. And it's always great hearing uh, people actually putting to work what we uh, gain and what we learn as we journey through the Word of God. And today I ask that you would prepare your hearts and prepare your minds as we get ready to go to the book of Philippians. And we're going to focus on chapter three. But before we do so, I would like to ask you to grab your Bible or grab any device that you have a Bible app downloaded on. And if you would, hold it up high and repeat after me. This is my Bible. The word of God. And inside, God tells me the plans he has for my life. He tells me how much he loves me, even when this world tells me that I am not lovable and I shall be all that God desires for me to be because his Holy Spirit dwells inside of me and this I proclaim in Jesus name, amen. If you would turn your attention to Philippians chapter three, verse 12 through 16 is where we're going to read, but we're gonna uh, focus our attention on verses 12 through 14, but for the sake of context, we're gonna read up to verse 16. So beginning at verse 12 in the book of Philippians, chapter three, it says, not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. And if in anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. However, let us keep living by that same standard to which we have attained. And today I would like to talk to you on a, just this one thing, just this one thing. See, this particular passage was written by the Apostle Paul, and 
The book of Philippians is a wonderful, wonderful uh, book that uh, captures so much uh, solid doctrine and uh, uh, principles that we can glean from, that we can benefit from, that we can grow from. But here in chapter three, it can be divided into three parts. Verses one through three can be described as Paul's warnings. In verses four through six, it can be described as Paul's testimony. From uh, verse 7 on up, it will be described or can be described as Paul's goals or his uh, pursuits. And so we're going to focus our attention on the third part. But this passage here, I, I pray that we as a church, and I'm not talking about uh, Annistown Road Church exclusively here. I'm saying uh, us as the body of believers and uh, those believers who are watching now that we will gain from this and that it will not only be beneficial to our lives, but that it will also impact the lives of others. In this particular passage, we're going to look at three major points. And as we look at this passage, we discover some things um, not only about Paul, but we discover some things about ourselves. See, when we look at this text, the first thing that we may notice is that the examination, that there is an examination. Uh, but before we go there, let me tell you why this examination is so critical. It's because we all have a past, we all have failed in the past, and at times we have all been dissatisfied with our spiritual walk. But there's a um, solution for this. First thing we need to do is look at this examination. We see this in verse 12a and 13a. Notice in 12a it says, not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect. And in 13a, it says, brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. So Paul was saying, as I take an examination of my uh, spiritual journey thus far, I have quickly surmised or discovered that I have not arrived. Now, of all people, Paul could have said, if it's based upon my works, then you all should hang a banner in my name. If it's based upon my works, you all should give me a crown. You should give me a trophy. You should put a plaque on the wall because Paul had accomplished many things in his journey based upon his works. In fact, if you go back to verses four through six, a number of things, uh, they stand out uh, con concerning Paul's testimony. Paul had mentioned at one time that in his journey, go back to verse four, if you would. He says, although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone has a mind to put to confidence in the flesh, I far more. For he says in verse five, circumcise the eighth day. So what Paul was saying is uh, on the eighth day, I, I was circumcised because I had godly parents that obeyed the law. Paul says, I am of the nation of Israel. You can give me that. Uh, you can check that off also. He says, I am of the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin was one of the most powerful and prominent uh, of the other tribes. And he says, I am of that tribe. He says, I am a Hebrew of Hebrews. In other words, I was bred. I'm 100% Hebrew. I'm not mixed with any other race. I, I'm, I'm Hebrew in and out. And he also says, as to the law, I am a Pharisee. Uh, the Pharisees were the most religious group, uh, and they actually um, took great pride in knowing uh, the laws, but also in following uh, the letter of the laws, not necessarily the spirit of the law, but the letters of the law. And he says, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church. In other words, Paul says, I was extremely passionate and I was about persecuting the church. If you recall, and, uh, when Paul was there and he actually um, promoted uh, Stephen being stoned and he also gave the approval of uh, the Pharisees and those who were attacking uh, Stephen to lay their cloaks down as they were throwing stones 
uh, asked Stephen and they, 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 and Stephen died as a result of it. And he says, as to the righteousness which is in the law, found blameless. In other words, Paul says, if you're going based upon the law, I obey the law to the T. And so Paul says, if you're going based upon works, I should receive a banner or a plaque. Now, it may sound like Paul is boasting, but really Paul is doing the complete opposite. Paul is actually going to say in just a few, uh, in the next few verses, uh, 7 through 11, that all of this can be counted as dung, as waste. It, it, it does nothing for me because uh, works by works, uh, it, works won't save me. And, and here's why it was so important. There were a group, there was a group of uh, Jews that would follow Paul and the others around. And every time uh, Paul would finish teaching, these Jews would come behind Paul to speak to that crowd that Paul had spoken to and say, OK, everything you heard from Paul about salvation is correct, except you can be saved if you believe in Jesus Christ, but you also, you also must be circumcised and you must also obey the Old Testament laws. If you are circumcised and you obey the Old Testament laws and you believe in Jesus Christ, then you can be saved. That's what they were teaching. Paul says no. Paul says, if we believe in Jesus Christ and we place our faith in Jesus Christ, by God's grace, we will be saved. It is not by our works. It's not by being circumcised. And so Paul uh, was, uh, listen, listen, Paul was to be praised by his works if you were going to go by that. But Paul recognized, listen, heaven's not smiling upon that because it's not about works. It's by grace that Paul had been saved. Well, Paul says, when I did this examination of my life, Paul says, I realized I have not arrived. And in fact, if you ever come across someone who uh, believes they have already arrived, be, listen, be, j just be, be, keep it on notice. Uh, be, be very skeptical. Uh, be very concerned. Be very prayerful for them. Because the Bible says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Therefore, let him who thinks he stand take heed that he does not fall. And Galatians chapter 6, verse 3 says, For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. See, we haven't reached perfection yet. Any Christian, any Jesus follower that claims that he has arrived, that demonstrates that immaturity. A mature Christian will say that I have not arrived. Every person uh, who has accepted Christ, they are now, if, if they accepted Christ, they were saved, but now they are being saved. So they're being sanctified, but they're not a finished product yet. And so sometimes when we look at another Christian, uh, because of the messiness in their life or the messiness in my life, sometimes we can easily say that person must not be saved. No, they're saved, but God is actually sanctifying them. And that's a work that is in progress. But don't look down on that person because it's unfair, because it shows that you're not really looking at yourself also. We pause for a second of reflection there. <laughs> See, we all are going through, we're all going through a progress. Paul says, I have not arrived. And Paul says, when I did this examination, I, I, I discovered something else about myself. Paul says, I, I realized that I had uh, failures and I've also had successes in the past. He realized he was not perfect, but Paul says, I can't sit still. I can't, I can't sit still in my yesterday. I may have fallen, but guess what? By the grace of God, I'm going to get up each time and I'm going to continue to run. And so what Paul was saying in verse 12b and in 13b and in 14a is that as a Jesus follower, I put in the effort. As Jesus followers, we have to put in the effort. Effort matters. Our effort matters. And so these verses, uh, 12b, 13b, and 14a, they, they are characterized by 
action terms. And so notice Paul uses the word, like for instance in 12b, I press on, uh, which was a Greek word, and it means to run swiftly in order to catch a person or a thing. And it was often utilized to uh, illustrate or to uh, relate uh, about a dog that was chasing after a fox, that was hunting after a fox, and the dog would not quit until he actually caught up to the fox and led the hunter to the fox. And so Paul was saying we must press on because Paul says that is our obligation. So Paul says our effort matters. And Paul also uses the uh, action word uh, in hope of apprehending something. Paul says I'm running in order to catch hold of something, to, to grasp something. And he also uses the uh, um, this term to relate um, to lay hands on. And so Paul says, I'm not going to quit until I get my hands on it. I, I have to have it. I won't stop. So Paul is saying my pursuit will not come to an end until I grasp that thing, that person. These are, these are action terms because Paul was about the activity that God had placed on his life. And so as Jesus followers, we're called to do the same thing. How many of us are stuck uh, in our salvation? See, so many people come to the cross, but that's where some of us get stuck. The Bible says, pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow me. Why are you still standing at the cross? Pick it up, deny yourself and follow him. You are not meant to get stuck there. Paul was about pursuing after Christ. And the reason uh, Paul was about this was because, notice in verse 13a, Paul says, because this one thing I do. And so the key to Paul's success was that Paul was a specialist. Paul did not focus on uh, uh, three different things or five different things or two different things. Paul focused on one thing, and that was to know Jesus Christ. And so Guess how much life would be easier, easier for you and I if we actually had a one-track mind like Paul. Paul had a one-track mind. Everything Paul did, everything Paul said was about Jesus Christ. All of it came back to Jesus Christ. So we need a one-track mind, become a specialist. He says this one thing I do. Another verb he used. He says, forgetting those things which are behind me. In other words, Paul didn't spend all of his time focusing on his past, his past successes or his past failures. Uh, listen, pa Paul says, I made many mistakes in the past. I can't undo a lot of those things, but I have embraced the forgiveness of God. And so I'm going to focus forward. If we're not careful, we will look back at our past successes, and if we're not careful, we will stay there. But we sometimes can look back at our past failures, and our past failures will make us afraid to move forward, and we will just lay there, too afraid to move, paralyzed, that we're going to make another mistake again. Paul says, my successes or my failures in the past, I don't pay attention to those. I press on. And so Paul had this forward thinking mindset. Have you ever noticed that when uh, uh, Olympic runners, when they come out and they stand at the starting line, when they're at that starting line, they're not looking into the stands. They're not looking at the other runners on their left or right, nor are they paying any attention to any other events that are taking place on that day. Instead, their eyes are focused are, and placed on the finish line. It is focused on the mark, which is why Paul says in 14a, I press on towards the mark. Paul was a specialist that focused on one thing. He had his mind, his eyes 
on the mark. As believers, we have to keep our eyes on the mark. Do not get distracted by all of the um, temptations of the world. Sometimes we can get so caught up in the latest episodes and the uh, uh, reality shows, uh, uh, The Voice, uh, 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 I, they got so many now, I can't even think of them all, but it's loads of them and we get caught up in these reality shows and then we get caught up in other people, people's lives. We get caught up in our our clothing, we get caught up in our cars, and we get caught up in our careers. And all of this time, Christ is saying, you're missing out on the greatest person that you could ever enjoy. That is me. Paul was a one-track minded person. He was a specialist that kept his eyes on the mark. So it wasn't just the examination. It wasn't just the effort. But Paul also recognized the expectation. Look at verse uh, 14b. In 14b, I'll, I'll read the entire verse. Paul says, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And Paul was saying, there is an expectation. Christ created me for a purpose. But not only did he create me with a purpose, but he has called me into a relationship with him. And this relationship that I have with him, it, it, it calls me into my purpose to serve and to glorify him. And I will not be satisfied. That itch will not be scratched unless I am pursuing what God has called me to do. That is the expectation that has been placed on my life. And I must reach for it. I must attain it. And Paul says, I will not be satisfied any other way. In, in fact, Paul says this in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And Paul is saying, I am going to pursue what God has shaped and molded and called me to do until Christ return, that is the call upon my life, but it's not just a call, uh, it's a high call that has been placed on every believer. I want you to remember this. A high call has been placed on your life. It's such a high call because it comes from God himself. It is an honorable pursuit. And one day, you're going to have to stand before God. I'm going to have to stand before God. And we truly do should desire uh, to hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. He's not looking for us to stand on the sideline and wait and watch other people run past us. In fact, uh, Paul, when he says, I have this mind, uh, this one track mind to move forward and to press on, and I'm not distracted by what's going on uh, uh, behind me as far as my past failures or my past excel successes, but also be careful of this. Be careful not to look at what other Jesus followers are doing because some there will always be someone that outruns you. There will always be another Christian that actually lags behind you. And there will also be those that actually drop out of the race altogether. But you press on towards the mark. It is our high calling. And so I want you to walk away with these three things. These three keys. One, just stay focused. Stay focused. Um, that's why he says in verse 13, once again, uh, to, to, to have that one track mind and, uh, and say this one thing I do. And, and Paul is trying to hammer that down. And so Paul had this single mind minded focus. So stay focused. Also, don't just be focused. Be forgetful. Be forgetful. Don't spend so much time on your yesterday. Run today. And when tomorrow comes, you should still be running. Don't pause. Don't stop. You keep moving forward. Keep your eyes on the prize. Don't get uh, uh, distracted by your flesh. Don't get distracted uh, by Satan. Do not get distracted by this world. Keep your eyes on the prize. Stay focused and also uh, remain uh, forgetful. And, and, and don't, don't hold on to the past. 
Don't carry that dead weight, but also be faithful. Be faithful to the very end. That's why once again, he says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's what he says in verse 14. So stay focused, stay forgetful, stay faithful. God has called us into a high, high, high calling. We are to excel in this calling. Why are we to excel? Because every believer has been indwelt with the Holy Spirit who will empower us to do all that God has uh, ordained for us to do. And so there is no reason whatsoever for you and I to pause because the strength that we need, guess what? The Holy Spirit will provide it. The wisdom that we need, the Holy Spirit will provide it. The, uh, the, 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 the things that we need in order to accomplish God's task, God says, I will provide it. So we know that God would do his part. You and I, we have to do our part. Stay faithful. Once again, be focused. Be forgetful. Be faithful and watch and see when you stand before God, that excitement that you will experience when you hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. But even before you hear those words, you will see other people during your time on earth come to know Jesus Christ because of your faithfulness. If you're listening to this message today, you may be hearing for the first time that you were created with the purpose. You may be hearing for the first time that your past failures or your past successes without Christ, they don't matter. They, they're, they're just waste. And you may say, I want to live my life on purpose. Well, guess what? Today you can have that opportunity to know Jesus Christ. That is why you are here. So if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I would like for you just to pray with me. I want you to repeat these words, and I want you to know that there is a huge family of believers that are praying for you and with you uh, right now as you pray these words with your heart. And so if you would, repeat after me. Lord, I recognize that I am lost without you. I recognize that without you, I am not fulfilling my purpose. Lord, I am a sinner. But Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I believed he was buried and I believe that he rose from the grave. I believe that he has prepared and he has designed purpose for my life. I believe that he is the greatest proof that I can be born again, that I can have a newness in my life, a newness of life. Lord, please forgive me of my sins. I confess today Jesus Christ as my Savior, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord, and I thank you, God, for this sweet gift of salvation that I have discovered, that I will hold on to, and that I will share with others when it comes to Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. Thank you so much for being here today. And I just ask that you would just continue to uh, pray for uh, salvation to take hold, um, and that salvation will be uh, felt and that, I mean, that salvation, sanctification will be felt. So it's one thing for a person to come to Christ. It's uh, another whole chapter for a person to grow in Christ. So for those of you who have come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior today, we pray as a church that you will continue to grow in your relationship with Christ. Thank you so much for being here, and we look forward to hearing more about your new journey in Christ. God bless you. Thank you so much again for choosing to worship with us this morning. You can also still worship through giving at annis.town/give. 
If you want to become a member of our Annistown Road family, you can do that online at annistown.com. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week.